And off the top tonight, Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee ruled Friday morning Atlanta prosecutor Fonnie Willis can stay on the case against Donald Trump if she removes her special prosecutor, Nathan Wade. If she doesn't, the judge said she'll have to step aside herself. This comes after weeks of hearings into potentially disqualifying her from the case. She came under fire for inappropriate relationship with Wade, which came to light. Willis has not yet said what she'll do. Judge McAfee also ordered prosecutors to drop several charges against former President Donald Trump. It's the first time the charges have been dismissed in any of Trump's four criminal cases. Bonnie Willis charged Trump with 13 counts for allegedly conspiring with a group of people to form a criminal enterprise to subvert the 2020 election results in Georgia. McAfee said three of the charges against Trump lack detail concerning the essential legal element. He said that's fatal. One of those charges... Well, the one where Trump solicited the Georgia Secretary of State to, quote, find the votes in this phone call. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. Just one more than we have. Prosecutors say Trump and former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows solicited Brad Raffensperger to violate his oath of office by requesting that he unlawfully influence the certified election results. Judge McAfee reasoned that the charge isn't clear enough just to say his oath of office. The oaths come from somewhere. They come from the United States Constitution and Georgia's Constitution. Those are pretty hefty documents, and they're not specific enough to give Trump a fair shot at defending himself. McAfee says... Quote, on its own, the United States Constitution contains hundreds of clauses, any one of which can be the subject of a lifetime study. This decision is a blow to Fonnie Willis's prosecution team, but it's not a nail in the coffin. Prosecutors will have the chance to amend the charges with more detail. The judge all but invites the prosecutors to re refile these charges. They have, what, a six-month period in which they can refile the charges. And the issue here is that the indictments weren't sufficiently specific as to uh, some of the counts, right? And, and you, you can correct that. It's not like uh, the judge found that, that there was no possible set of circumstances under, under which these charges could be filed. Now we wait to see what Fonnie Willis decides. Meanwhile, Judge Eileen Cannon overseeing... The Mar-a-Lago documents case against Trump in Florida denied one of Trump's motions to dismiss the case. Trump tried to argue that one of the law's special counsel Jack Smith relied on was unconstitutionally vague. And in New York, state prosecutors now want to delay Trump's criminal trial by 30 days. It's still set to be the first criminal trial of a former president. But now, instead of starting one week from tomorrow, it could be as late as April before the trial begins. Trump will face charges related to hush money payments made to adult film star, film star Stormy Daniels in the run-up to the 2016 election. This week, we learned that Trump plans to make an interesting argument. He notified the judge that he plans to rely on what's called the advice of counsel defense, but only a little bit and kind of, but not really. Now, to understand why Trump doesn't want to go all in here, you got to understand the defense and what it triggers. What is the advice of counsel defense? Well, it's a legal defense that can be quite effective, especially in white-collar criminal cases like fraud or money laundering. Those crimes require that the defendant act with an unlawful intent. But if the defendant can show, hey, I was just following the advice of my lawyer and I thought this was all good, then you can't show that they had the intent to commit a crime because what they thought they were doing was all okay in the first place. Now, the tricker part, tricky part here is claiming advice of counsel means you got to open up about what you said to your lawyer and what he said to you. It requires at least a partial waiver of attorney-client privilege, which Trump does not want to do. So it looks like he's going to try some kind of claiming the version here, relying on his former fixer, Michael Cohen, but without giving up the privilege that would allow Cohen, now a Trump critic, to speak freely. She may try to just sneak in insinuations, and that's what an advice of counsel defense, the law around it shows. You don't sneak in insinuations. You make the whole showing, you play an open hand, and then you can argue to the jury, but you can't do it in half measures, and that's precisely what it looks like to me. Trump is gonna be trying to do and that will um, really engender scuffles at trial. Now the judge is soon going to decide what to do with that delay request. Meantime, 
While Trump navigates his personal criminal docket while on the campaign trail, President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, is also facing a summer trial. This week, a federal judge said Hunter Biden will go on trial for gun-related charges in Delaware June 3rd. Could be a busy June for Hunter. On June 20th, he's scheduled to face federal tax evasion charges in California for failing to pay over a million dollars to the IRS, according to prosecutors. And from Capitol Hill, it's just a short walk across First Street to the Supreme Court, where the court said on Friday that public officials can block people on social media in certain circumstances. The court considered a pair of cases with local officials in Michigan and California where they had deleted user comments and blocked some constituents. The justices are gearing up for several major cases this month. Tomorrow, the court will hear a major case about the power of the federal government to communicate with social media companies about how they moderate content. It's a hot topic this term after the court heard a challenge to state laws trying to govern how private social media companies moderate content. We're still waiting on that decision. But in the meantime, this case was filed by a group of doctors and epidemiologists who claimed that their negative posts about COVID-19 policies were censored at the urging of the federal government, which violates their First Amendment right to free speech. And Justice Sonia Sotomayor, an Obama appointee, also spoke out this week on why she thinks the court should not have cameras in the courtroom. She recalled conversations with senators when she was interviewing for the job. I asked them when things had changed in the sort of partisan nature of the Senate. Mm. And a few of them attributed it, and I know the media is going to be unhappy about this, to having uh, cameras in the, Senate, in the Senate and House chambers. Because with the cameras, people felt um, no longer an obligation to sit in the room with their colleagues. Actually, Sotomayor at one time was open to the idea of cameras, but clearly she has since changed her mind. The Department of Justice has opened a criminal investigation of Alaska Airlines, the incident that happened on the Boeing 737 MAX in January that left a giant hole in the aircraft minutes after takeoff. Boeing is facing increasing scrutiny after at least six safety incidents have been reported since the start of the year. And James Crumbly, the father of the Michigan school shooter who killed four classmates in November 2021, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, in part for not doing enough to prevent the deadly shooting. His wife, Jennifer, was convicted on the same charges last month. And in our neck of the woods, Ruby Corrado, the founder of the D.C.-based LGBTQ nonprofit Casa Ruby, who's now facing criminal charges for fraud and money laundering, was released from jail this week while she awaits trial. The release actually came over objections from the U.S. attorney, who claims that Corrado is a serious flight risk after she fled to her native El Salvador in 2022 after initial reports surfaced about her misusing COVID relief funds. And Lee Boyd Malvo, also known as the D.C. Sniper, was in court this week. Malvo is serving multiple life sentences in Virginia for a series of sniper shootings across the region that killed 10 people back in 2002. He was 17 at the time. Malvo was sentenced to life in Maryland and Virginia. He appeared in court in Montgomery County this week to determine whether and when he'll get resentenced in Maryland, all after a Supreme Court 2012 decision that says mandatory life sentences without parole for juveniles actually violates the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. Caden Holland, the 16-year-old also known as Baby K, pleaded guilty to attempted murder on Thursday in a Prince George's County courthouse. The teen is charged with a school bus attack where he pulled a gun on a student, pulled the trigger three times, but the gun malfunctioned. He is facing 25 years. He's also wanted for murder charges in the district.